So this is the Le Mans cabinet humidor, also called the Barbados cabinet humidor uh, by Prestige Import Group. I purchased it on firstclasshumidors.com. Uh, it was about $700 plus shipping. This is the same cabinet humidor that Tim from Cigars Daily has, so you may have also seen his uh, cigar humidor tour on YouTube as well. Um, so as you can see, the humidor has six shelves. The website says that it will hold about 2,000 cigars, uh, but with my experience, of humidors usually if you take whatever the number stated that it will hold and divide that by two that's probably a more accurate I don't know how many cigars I currently have in there but it's probably I don't know close to about 600 or so it's pretty tight if you if you stack it up with you know only boxes of cigars you may be able to fit you know 1500 or 2000 but realistically uh, 600 to to a thousand is is probably about the max. Uh, so first I'll kind of go over the way I've got this set up and then I'll show you some of the cigars that um, I've got in my collection. So first of all, this humidor uh, came with two Cigar Oasis Plus units for free. Um, and so far they work pretty good. Um, I've got one currently on the bottom shelf and then the second one I put on the third shelf. So you just set these to your preferred humidity and uh, so far it's done a pretty good job of keeping it around um, 65 to 70 percent relative humidity. I've got uh, three hygrometers, one at the top and the middle and the bottom. Um, so currently this is at about 70 one degrees and 69% humidity at the top. Uh, the middle one, it's saying it's at about 68% humidity, close to 72 degrees. And then on the bottom, um, it's reading about 68% relative humidity. I uh, also want to note that uh, these Cigar Oasis units come with these small ribbons and a little insert in the back of the humidor that will allow you to you know, thread the ribbons through the back of it. I just used an X-Acto knife uh, to cut a small slit so that no air can get in or out and slide those ribbons through the back and then they plug in into a um, USB and then standard outlet. Um, I did in order to place the second Cigar Oasis unit on the middle shelf, uh, I did purchase a longer ribbon uh, just on Amazon. I think it was 20 bucks or so, so that I could reach that second um, humidification unit on the middle cabinet. I uh, also wanted to note that you'll see that I've got some lights in there. These did not come with the um, cabinet. I bought these lights off of Amazon as well. Um, which certainly adds a nice feature. Uh, the lights come with a, uh, they're battery operated, and then they come with this remote, uh, so you can turn the lights on or off. And then uh, it's also got a feature where you can adjust the brightness and set them to a timer, um, but it works pretty good. And with the, the battery operated lighting you don't have to worry about plugging them into an, to an outlet so in addition to the the cigar oasis plus units that came with the humidor uh, i decided to purchase this small zycar humifan uh, i think it was around 40 dollars on amazon and it's really designed for a smaller humidor um, but since i already had the the two fans that came with the unit um, I decided to get another just smaller fan so that I could get some more air circulation uh, to the top shelves of the humidor. So I'll go ahead and open this up and show you some of the cigars that I've got stored in here. On the top shelf, these are mostly my 
kind of special occasion cigars. We've got some Padron, Family Reserve, 50 years, uh, some Davidoff Nicaraguas, uh, which I've smoked a few of those. And those are one of my favorite um, full-bodied cigars. Also got some Padron 1964s, uh, some Padron 40 years, a Padron 90 year. And then this is probably my most expensive cigar, um, Cohiba Bihike, which was given to me. And yes, it is real. Um, I got it from a trusted source, so I know that it's not a fake Bihike. Uh, then I've got some other Padrones, uh, another 1964, Padron 1926. This is just the tube that the um, Padron 90th goes in, and then an Opus X. And then some My Father, Le Bijou, 1922s. Uh, and then the next two rows are cigars that uh, are probably my favorites, but aren't really special occasion cigars, just ones that I really enjoy. Um, some CAO Brasilias, uh, some Oliva V Melanios, which are one of my favorites. Uh, and then these are probably my, I don't know, top two or three favorite cigars that are not very expensive. Um, Rocky Patel Decades. And I've got some additional Oliva G series and then regular B series as well. Next row down, uh, some Abo XOs. These are my, really my only Cuban cigars uh, that I purchased on a international trip. Uh, some Romeos and some Cohiba Sig Siglos. Uh, and then next to that, I've got some Liga T52s and then also some Liga Provada number nines. Uh, Drew Estate Undercrown, some Tatawahe ta Tattoos. And then some regular Padrones, you know, Thousand Series, both in Natural and Maduro, which I enjoy. Uh, some Crow Magnons, Arturo Fuente Hemingways, and some Ashton, Ashton VSGs. And then the next row down, um, really the bottom three rows are just mostly samplers, five pack, 10 packs that I purchased online. This is just a CAO sampler that I got. I've got a couple of CAO Blacks. Uh, I believe this is the CAO VR Italia, CAO MX2, and then a CAO Flathead. Uh, a couple of Rocky Patel 1990s. Um, let's see, this one is a Rocky Patel The Edge. And in the back there, I've got some Sancho Panza Cinco Vegas Punch. Uh, what is this one here? Monte Cristo Medianoche, some uh, Romeo 1875s, looks like those are Alec Bradley, Sun Grown, uh, some La Aroma de Cuba, and then some diesel cigars, a couple different versions of Ave Maria, uh, which are Cigar Internationals, one of Cigar Internationals. Um, exclusive brands. A couple of the uh, La Gloria Cubana Serie R's. So my father, uh, Flor de las Antillas, probably not saying that right. Uh, Monte Cristo Hyde Parks, some Man of War Ruinations, and some Don Diego's. And the next shelf down, got some Alec Bradley Prensados, Partagas Blacks, some uh, Perdomo, 10 year champagnes, Laranjas, uh, AJ New Worlds, some Cohiba Red Dots, and then these I haven't tried yet. These are the Rocky Patel Decade and the Cameroon wrapper. Uh, some La Felina Blacks, some Rocky Patel, what are those? Uh, Sun Grown Camacho Triple Maduro, some more Diesels. Uh, H. Upman's and Ramon Bueso Genesis The Project. And then on the bottom shelf, I've got some Alec Bradley Tempest, some Gurkha Beauties, uh, some more Cohiba, Cohiba Red Dots, the Bahia Blue, La Hermandad, uh, Nica Libre, and some 
Hoyota Nicaragua Antonios, some Excaliburs, uh, some Hoyota Monterey's, and then some La Historias. And I've also got a box of Drew Estate Herrera, Herrera Estelis that I haven't opened yet, and another box of Oliva Siri V Melanias, and then a couple 10 packs of uh, Drew Estate Muats. So that's pretty much my collection. I also have this desktop humidor, which was given to me along with about 50 Crossfire cigars, which is Crossfire is a brand out of Dominican Republic. Uh, they're not very common. There's not a lot of places that you can buy them online, but um, really good cigars. Uh, I've got some Connecticut's, which are okay. Uh, some Corojos, uh, Habanos, and then some Maduro. As I said, this humidor was given to me, but I think you can buy it on Amazon and other places online for around, I don't know, $150, $200. And then lastly, I've got these acrylic jar humidors that I keep my infused cigars in. I'm not a huge infused or flavored cigar fan, but I do like to have uh, some infused cigars every once in a while. And uh, I was told that you really want to keep your infused cigars separate from your other cigars just because of the flavors that are in them. Uh, they can affect your other cigars if you store them together. So uh, in these, I've just got some Acid Cuba Cubas and some, I think, CI Legend uh, by Drew Estate Cigars and then also some Tabaca Specials. Uh, so again, not a huge fan of the infused cigars, but I do like to have some every once in a while. The Tabaca Specials are great with uh, coffee and then the Acid Cuba Cubas I really enjoy with uh, like a good flavored beer, I think. Probably one of my favorite pairings is a Tropicalia beer by Creature Comforts along with an Acid Cuba Cuba. I think it just a um, great pairing, great flavor. And then in the second jar, I've just got some uh, Muwak Kentucky Fire Cured Cigars, which if you've ever had these, uh, when you open them up out of the package, they are very pungent. And I uh, just wanted to keep these separate from my other cigars since they do have such a strong aroma to them. Then I've got this Tupperware container that I'll, I'll just keep some of my cheap sticks in here. I think I've got some CI knockoffs, uh, JC Newman Judge Wrights in there, which are great sticks for the price, um, but I just feel like keeping those separate as well from all my other cigars. I know there's a lot of debate on whether or not you should leave the cigars in the cellophane out of the cellophane. There's a lot of videos, a lot of research, a lot of opinions. For me, I just prefer to leave them in their cellophane. And uh, of course, a lot of the Padrones and some of the other cigars don't come with cellophane. So those obviously, um, I don't have any cellophane on those. But for the ones that do come in cellophane, um, I do choose to, to leave the cellophane wrappers on the cigars uh, when they're stored in my humidor. And one of the things that I do though is I will take uh, some scissors and cut off the very end of the cellophane wrapper and you know that will basically allow some air circulation to come into the foot of the cigar. And uh, I don't know if it really makes a difference or not, but I saw a video on it and I thought it was a good tip so I decided to do it with uh, my cigars. And then also wanted to note that probably about 95% of the cigars that I buy are purchased online. And so, you know, it's pretty much recommended that you don't smoke cigars right away. Uh, you, you know, it's advised to let them rest or acclimate in your humidor for you know, anywhere from at least two weeks to a couple months before you smoke them. Um, yeah, I know there's, again, a lot of opinions about how long you should rest cigars or, or age them. Uh, I tend to think that, you know, a minimum of two weeks is recommended before um, I'll smoke my cigars. But another thing that I'll do is on the cellophane wrappers, I'll just take a Sharpie and I'll write the date and the month that I purchase the cigars or that I receive the cigars and that way when I'm pulling them out of the humidor I'll know if they're 
you know, a month old or six months old. And then I can, you know, take a mental note of uh, whether I prefer the cigar or if I can tell the difference between the burn or the taste, um, you know, depending on how old the cigar is. So uh, that's just what I do. I'm still kind of experimenting uh, with different cigars and uh, trying to figure out if, you know, if it really does make a difference to, to rest the cigars for a long period of time. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to share it with others and also feel free to leave any comments below. Thanks for watching.